everyone, I'm Captain Morgan, and I'm Eric. And it's time for new acquisitions! Eric and I have not done the Omnibus in about six, eight weeks, so I don't even know how long it's been. Um, yeah, about six Because weeks. we were supposed to do one right before Christmas, but then we did, we did it until the uh, rewind. And yeah, and uh, the scheduling and things. Yeah, and Sarah went out of town, and so we weren't able to shoot that weekend. Yeah. So yeah, um, it's been very difficult getting back to the omnibus, but hopefully we'll be in a good groove. Uh, now, we had every intention of uh, taking a hiatus, so we just took our hiatus earlier than we had planned is, is, is the deal. But anyway, so now uh, we're going to show you a ridiculous amount of stuff uh, because it has really piled up. And Eric, why don't you begin? Why don't you do a few things? We'll just jump back and forth. You do a okay. few things, I'll do a few things. I'll just go through, because I don't have like a whole lot right here. I'll, I'll burn through my Christmas stuff. Sure. Um, so, you, do you know who sent this? Um, we should have written these down. We should I have. completely forgot about that. Yeah, a, you got Lone Wolf and Cub a from... A viewer sent me I don't the... want to say any names because I don't want to be wrong, yeah. but I, I'm positive it was a patron. It was one of our patrons. Okay, one of our patrons uh, sent me the Criterion box set for the Lone Wolf and Cub movies, which is awesome. Which is awesome. Um, I'm really excited uh, to watch all of these. And so those are... Uh, the original films before they became, before they changed them and did the American. Made Shogun Assassin. Yeah, yes. Shogun Assassin. Uh, there is a Shogun Assassin box set, and I want that one too, because those are interesting in their own way. But I'm really excited to watch these. Uh, they're all Japanese and, and subtitled, and there's a lot of cool, uh, like, special, special features stuff, like Criterion always does. Sometimes I feel like Criterion's a little light on the special features, and I don't know why it costs so much, but, but this looks like it has a bunch of special features, so I'm excited about that. Um, and then, uh, from my father, I got. A bunch of, I mean, what I asked for. I got <laughs> Monster of Frankenstein. Uh, this is all of it. This is all of the, the Marvel Frankenstein comics. Oh, wow. Um, which I'm excited to read at some point. Um, I got volume two of Tomb of Dracula. Now, can I say something? Yeah. If DC had made that trade, it would be like two-thirds or half the size. Yep, yep. Because because DC has like weird alchemy, time lord technology. We cannot figure out how they're doing it. But uh, we keep getting newer trades where we're like, how are you fitting that And much? like putting them next to old versions where like, it, it, it's like half the size. I bet there's a crisis and the, now and the, that's like this. And the paper yeah. doesn't seem thinner. It doesn't. Um, so uh, this is the second volume of Tomb of Dracula. I've got the first volume already. Uh, they're putting these out once a year in October, which I don't like. Yeah, like it's timely, and I, I get the business side of that, where they probably figure it'll sell better but, like, then. This is the Marvel horror book. And it's going to take forever Wolf to collect Night's it. Night's already done as, I mean, I guess Monster Mouse Franks has only one book. But like, how many volumes? How, this is going to be in be. total. It's 80 issues. And these tend to also include, like... How many like, do you get? 10 or 12? Well, so this one is 16 through 24. Then it also includes Werewolf by Night 15, because it was a crossover. Uh, Giant Size Spider-Man number one. Giant Size Chillers number one. Giant Size Dracula number two. Uh, Frankenstein 7 through 9, and Dracula Lives 7 through 9. Okay, so they got a lot in there, but it's only eight issues of that particular book. Which yeah, but issues. it's but it's like all it's it's all of the Dracula appearances. I imagine eventually we'll get the we'll get the X Men stuff where, where uh, Dracula tries to marry Storm. Like they're there including a, everything. Are there quite a few other appearances outside of that book? Like, um, like, is that going to keep happening where you'll only get eight or ten issues of Tomb of Dracula? I because don't if that's know. the case, that'll be at least eight or ten volumes. I think it peers off as it goes on. But uh, there's some black and white stuff in the uh, Monsters Unleashed uh, magazine. Um, and I th there's at least, I think, four giant-sized Draculas. And then there's the X-Men crossover. So, like, I don't know if it'll happen as much. It's kind of like uh, Spider-Man 299. Yeah. Where, like, that third trade is just all, like, other books. Yeah. Um, I imagine as it goes on, it'll be more and more to a Dracula. And, like, giant-sized Dracula and, like, annuals and things like that are important and part of the book. They're just not part of the number sequence. Right. Um, and then I also got volumes two and three of Werewolf by Night. Volume one's out of print. I'm about to get that soon before it becomes expensive. Uh, but I got volume two and three of Werewolf by Night, which is all of it not down to Eric always theme asks. Yeah. For, for Christmas presents. So that's all cool. That's all the Christmas stuff there. You're going to start reading some of that pretty soon? I really want to get to the Tomb of Dracula. I've read the first, like, four issues of Tomb of Dracula. It's difficult because Marv Wolfman doesn't come on to issue eight, and it's a different writer, like, every issue for the first seven issues. Uh, so, like, it's oh, just different okay. every time. Um, it's not bad, but, like... That kind of thing's hard to do, like, weird to read collected. And I don't want to just skip to the Marv Wolfman things, because I know he's going to build on things that existed before, and they're not bad. Uh, but, no, I, I do really want to get to the to that stuff. 
Um, Werewolf by Night and Monster Frankenstein I'll get to eventually. <laughs> but I want to have them while they exist. I want to I get them while they exist so I can read them when I'm in the mood for that. Uh, well, I'm not going to go specifically for Christmas presents right away just because of the way I have the stuff on the desk laid out. I have a lot of stuff sitting here. So um, I'm just going to go for whatever is closest, and I shall begin with recent acquisitions of superhero movies. Uh, here is Venom. I mentioned this earlier. It's still in the shrink wrap. I haven't even watched this again since the theater. Watch them. I got I to gotta watch, watch it. It. Uh, so there is a Target, not Steelbook, but the book thing oh. that, they do, that I didn't get, oh. unfortunately. So maybe, hopefully at some point I'll run into that. But I try to get those when I can. But So this is just the regular one. Um, and anyway, so uh, Venom, and then uh, my mom got me Incredibles 2 for Christmas. Because, uh, I don't know, I usually buy superhero movies right when they come out, but I was putting this one off just because... It wasn't great. I hadn't planned on watching it again right away. And I, like I say that, I don't always watch things again right away, but I couldn't get super excited about, about buying that. Uh, you sorry, have Incredibles plenty of things fans, over here that's like still in the shrink wrap. I do. Like I know. Years. I buy things right away, but uh, that one I was no just kind of waiting around on. So I, No, there's no commentary. So anyway, um, I was uh, glad that the one I just happened not to buy was the one somebody gave me for Christmas, because um, it's a bad idea to buy me superhero movies. And then, um, at least brand new recent yeah, yeah. stuff. Yeah. Uh, Once Upon a Deadpool, also still in the shrink wrap, but... Uh, I'll have you watch that at some point, because uh, you should. Should I watch that. that before I watch the Super Duper cut? cut? Um, I don't know. What's the viewing order on that? I don't. I, this probably is the the, the, the next one to watch because there's more stuff in that. That probably is the the way to watch it. That's my fifth favorite superhero film of the year. That's true, but I would, <laughs> but I would say I love uh, it so much I forgot it, it came out. I would say. A few weeks ago, when it was still in theaters, I would have said skip the Super Duper Cup before you go to the theater, but now that it's out on DVD, you know, or in Blu-ray, whatever. Um, actually, this is probably the only way this came out. It probably didn't come out separately also mm -hmm. on DVD, but, it, you know, it comes with a DVD. But anyway, so um, it's a fun cut. It's weird that there's three cuts of this now. Uh, I got Robocop 2 and 3, which I and just... And which one is canon? <laughs> yeah. Um... It doesn't matter because it's because uh, of the whole fourth wall breaking thing. I it's would love canon. it. I would it love it counts. if whatever the next movie is, whether it's X Force or Deadpool three or whatever. I would love it if the next one opens with him being like, "Now I know you've got questions about which version of the movie is canon. They all are." The thing is, there's nothing that contradicts any of the other movies. There's there, like like there are, uh, as I've said before, extra little scenes here and there that just add a little bit uh, to especially like background for like the Essex house and things like that but um you're not gonna build on that it should all count yeah and assume. it doesn't give you any new information it just establishes things earlier really. oh, okay there's not really anything that gives you new information okay okay so um yeah it kind of doesn't matter what joke is canon and things like that. Uh, Robocop 2 and 3, because I didn't have those in my collection, so now I do. And uh, I will probably get to Robocop 2 this year. Um, I am planning, I don't know exactly when yet. I haven't announced this. I guess I'll go ahead and announce this. I am planning a, uh, a, a month of four rewinds for sequels that didn't do well that I've not gotten around to. So I'm going to do Robocop 2, and I'm going to do Swamp Thing 2. And I, like, mostly, return or Revenge? I think it's Return. Okay. Mostly sequels uh, to things that I reviewed years and years ago that I've never yeah. gotten back to. Uh, and I'm also going to do Darkman, uh, Return are, of uh, Durant. Are the you gonna, third one is Die, Darkman, Die. But you, we've talked about that they're flipped. Oh, yeah. I, so I guess I don't know what order I'm going to do them in. Yeah. Okay, we gotta, i got to figure yeah. that out, yeah. And then um, I guess the fourth one is uh, Crow City of Angels. Oh, nice. Yeah. So anyway, so that's going to happen probably this year. There's a lot of production stuff that makes it better than it really is. That's what people tell me, yeah. That ending got completely reshot, and it becomes kind of just a remake, but the original script was not that. I used to have the original novelization that had the original ending. I got a couple of Batman statues. Um, I bought these at Eric's work. Yeah. And uh, here is the collector's edition statue with uh, the Joker sitting in, or standing in front of monitors. Which you've almost from, bought a couple of times. It's coming a couple of from times. From Arkham Origins. And uh, yeah, I have almost bought this several times. And uh, finally, man, I'm glad I waited because I got the box with all the other stuff in it. Mm -hmm. So I got the whole collector's edition minus the game, which of course I have already. And uh, it's got, I don't know if, if you've looked through it, it's cool. It's got like, like a bunch of uh, little documents and things from like... Oh. Just like Ar from Arkham, and then it's got uh, artifacts from uh, like the it's got like I, I, I want to say like wanted posters and stuff for like the the assassins that they pretended like were going to be more important to that game than they like were. Like the electrocutioner. Yes, and uh, and also 
uh, what Deadshot, who uh, has or, or Deathstroke. I think they're both. Of them. I'm trying to remember now, um, but I think it's Deadshot, and he's got a. Uh, now I can't remember. He's got that design been, where you can see his mouth. It's been so like long since I've seen but that. I think but they're both in it, right? I don't remember. I think they're both in it. But whichever one is the, is uh, a, a great boss you play in like the first hour. Like there's a really hard boss that, or decently hard boss um, that people were kind of impressed with. Uh, but story wise, they didn't do as much with those characters as they kind of pretended like they were going to. And then I also got this Arkham Knight statue, um, which is not painted, uh, and that irks Eric. Eric doesn't like this isn't painted. I don't. It looks unfinished. Yeah, it looks like you bought the prototype. I think it's fine. I like it quite a bit. Uh, it has it, it has a base that lights up, which is kind of cool, but I don't think it lights up enough. And I'll show you that. Um, like, I don't know. It would look cool in a dark room. And you know what? I turned off all the lights, and it's still not great. Um, I think yeah. the buildings are too close together. I think the buildings. Are too yeah, exactly. Hard. So that it would like I'm looking at it, like there's just like no room between the buildings. Yeah, I don't know how well on camera you can even tell until I tilt it that it's lit up. So, well, but I mean, again, part of that's because we've got you know even lighting here. But that's a Snyder thing. Snyder talks about how Gotham was built, and the buildings were too close together. That's why everyone's crazy. It's like it, it, the, the city was was almost intentionally built claustrophobic. That's interesting. Snyder does that. Talks about that somewhere. But one thing that is uh, kind of nice about the statue is the. On button for the lights is in the back and hidden under a building you can take off that has a magnet. Uh, so that's kind of a cool design because it's really inconspicuous and you'd never know that and you can yeah. turn it upside down. And I've never, off, so. I've never seen that. You'd think that would be like a real obvious thing. Yeah, to do. yeah. You think that would become standard for some things. But anyway, Eric, why don't you show us some more things, man? All right. Well, I mean, all my stuff is just comic books. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I got uh, Dark Knight Detective Volume One and the Cape Crusader Volume One. Uh, I would like to buy these as they come out. I think there's a second volume for this. This one's not done yet. These, theoretically, contain the adventures of Batman post-crisis. Okay. Cape Crusader skips the um, Alan Max, uh, Max Alan Collins stuff. He has a he has a run of like eight issues. Uh, which is the stuff that establishes Jason Todd post crisis. So that gives you like like lifting the, the the wheels off the Batmobile, things like that. Oh, cool! This skips that because that's already collected in a trade called Second Chances. That's irritating. That but, should be printed again. Well, what's more annoying is that that trade is out of print, so I can't get that. And I skipped it because I don't care about Jason Todd. But now that I have these. I don't want to. If they don't want to reprint things because they've done them before, the rule of thumb should be if it has it's to still stay in print. gettable. Yeah. yeah. Sure, but if it's like a hundred dollar trade now. Yeah. And it is. I'm sure. Um, and what's annoying is I bought that for a, as a gift for someone. Um, but I didn't buy it for myself. Uh, and I've then, done that a few times. And then, but do they go out of print? Like, I think you can still get Batman Noel. None and, of the things I've, yeah, no, no, that stuff's all still in print. Um, and then this one, so, I want to say, because it's weird, because this is Batman, Dark Knight Detective. I think this is Batman and this is Detective. Let me just double check on oh, that. Oh, okay. No, this is Batman, so this is Detective Comics. Okay, okay. well, that's good. All right, uh, so this one picks up after Crisis, the difference is, or what's missing from this is Batman Year 2. That's not as bad, because one, people hate that story, and two, <laughs> it's a flashback, but like, there's a chunk of issues in the middle here, uh, but this collects Mike W. Barr stuff and Alan Davis' stuff, which I always wanted to go back and read, because I've read the Scarecrow issue by Mike W. Barr and Alan Davis, and I love it, and so that, that was how I discovered these in the first place, was I was looking for that stuff. Oh, okay. um, But, I mean, it's very, it's interesting, because... When I flip through both of these books, they both look very different, but they both feel like I'm like I'm like oh this is what Batman feels like. Yeah. But they look and feel different, and I don't know what that means. But they both feel which like is, how Batman should feel. Which is why I'm sure Tom King keeps calling back to that era. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that Catwoman suit he uses uh, a, a few issues before Fifty, and then we see it again in Fifty. Yeah. Um. So I'm excited to read these at some point. Uh, that's my phone cover. I don't know if you noticed that. Uh. Yes. I have seen that cover. Yeah. I don't. I want to say I don't have that issue, but I should go track that down. So if you don't know these exist, because I don't feel like they're... One, this doesn't tell you what it is. These titles are real generic, and they don't tell you what these are. I hate that. I've wanted collections like this. I really want the 70s to get collected, too. But I've wanted collections like this for a long time, and I'm glad they're finally doing it. I'm going to try and buy them as they come out so I can support it and hope that these don't get canceled. Because what I would love is if these ran up to Nightfall, and you yeah, can get all yeah. of them. 
Um, I gotta ask the annoying question, which is just the way they collect those. Sometimes I wonder who they're for. Mm -hmm. Like, like they clearly are for people who want to read those stories, and they'll seek them out and they'll figure out what the generic title is. But why would you do it that? Why would you make it so cryptic to figure out? how to find the thing you're looking for. Mm. So, like, are they trying to sell those to people who don't know what they are in the first place? Like, I why do we do that? I don't know, and they also lie. Because this one... Now, to be fair, at least they put the creators across the top. That's true. Because that does help tell you what area they are. That's, that's the thing that's exciting about this, is I've only ever read The Cult and Death of the Family. Uh... I've never read Jim Starlin's so run. Starling, so, like, yeah. uh, this opens with uh, Ten Nights of the Beast. And they are numbered, so that's good. Yes. And they are in volumes, so at least if you know what, what, what they're supposed to be, you, you have them numbered, because we don't always number things. Also, what's weird about this is the, that... It, we're better about it these days. Is that it skips... I think it's the second volume. I think it's the second volume. Skips Death of the Family, but includes Lonely Place of Dying, which is weird, because the current printing of, of Death of the Family includes Lonely Place of Dying. So not perfect, but it's the best I'm gonna get right now. Yeah. Um, also, I, I have the old Lonely Place of Dying trade that is out of print and probably hard to get. I got, and it's probably it's probably worth a little bit. Like I got uh, BPRD Hell on Earth one through nine. Oh, cool. Um, so I can finally get back to reading BPRD because I can't buy things like a little bit. Like I have to have a big chunk of it, even if I'm only gonna read it, like. Because like I read through all four of those BPRD Plague of Frogs trades in like a month. Oh, that's why you're saying you can't buy them incrementally. Because no. you, because you do buy a lot of stuff incrementally. And they're also... There's so much happening, I want it all in my brain. Yeah. Um, so, so, I got those. So, you're saying you want to binge read those. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, there's 12, I think, right now. I think by the end of all of it, there might be 15. But, like, that's that's most of, of Hell on Earth. Um, I also got... This we should do. Yeah. Volume 1 and 2 of Tom King's The Vision. Is that all of it? That's all of it. Twelve issues. Okay, just the way you said that, volume one and two. Like, yeah, but that's yeah. all. But that's yeah. all. Yeah, this is all of it. It was um, only twelve issues. Yeah, and I got James Bond: The Body, which um, there's one more volume that happens in between. I'm gonna review one tonight and this. Not happens in between, but it's released in between. I'll oh, okay. read them out of order, even though they don't. They don't matter. They're not really. Con they're in the same continuity. It's not like they call back to each other. Um, but you still want to read it in order. Yeah, I still want to read it in order for some reason. Um, but, so, you're, but you're like that with TV shows. Yeah. With, like, uh, you know, singular episodes that are yeah. one and done and don't really have anything to do with each other. Like, yeah. if you watched, if you went back and watched TOS, you'd watch it from the beginning. Even yeah, though, I would. Yeah. Like, um, I, just, I just know how you watch stuff. I'm a little worried about this one. This is supposed to be the one that I'm not going to love. Oh. Well, who wrote it? Uh, Alice Cott. Don't know who that is. Apparently, it's real... I don't, I don't want to have preconceived notions going into it, but apparently it's real. I'm going to, I'm going to show how bad of a person James Bond is in Toxic Masculinity and things like that. Oh, okay. Now, you can do that. James Bond's not a good person. Sure, yeah. You can do that, and it's subtle, but well, like... Well, thoughtful and sophisticated. But that, that, like... That's... No, I think that's a good story to tell with James Bond, potentially. I'm worried about how it's going to be done, but also... Uh, I mean, like. Also, I, could you seem? Can I ask you a question? Could you seem too critical of Ian Fleming in a book that has Ian Fleming's name on the top of it? That's possible. Or is that a problem? Well, Ian I'm just Fleming, asking. Ian Fleming is on the record of saying James Bond's not a hero and he should not be emulated. Well, um, okay, sure. Uh, there, there's a really good interview with him. The spine's kind of not great. Um, or it's just real loud. You hear yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, it sounds like you're about to break there's it. There's a great interview with Ian Fleming and Raymond Chandler where uh, he refers to Philip Marlowe as a hero. He goes, but my guy's not a hero. Um, so that's not necessarily not... Because the movies are never played that way. No, no. Um, Maybe more a little bit here and there with the newer but ones. But what makes me think it's going to be that more like modern, like, like you shouldn't like James Bond kind of thing is that we've got neo-Nazis in it. Okay. And that, we'll see. Uh, You're James, just afraid it'll be preachy. Is what I'm afraid it's going to be preachy. The book I'm going to talk about uh, tonight, James Bond, has neo-Nazis in it too, and I think it's done incredibly well. Not, I don't know. It just... Two in a row with the neo-Nazis, eh? Well, there's one in between. Uh, oh, you said that, okay. But that All one right. does it interestingly. I understand. I'm worried that this one's going to feel preachy and, like, like I you try to make me feel bad for liking James Bond in the first place. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, I, I, I don't want to judge it before I've read it, uh, but I, I, it, it's, it's got not great reviews. Well, let's see how much other stuff I can knock out in 10 minutes. Yeah, because that's um, everything I got.
So I, I'm going to do some Christmas presents. The first one is Above Eric's Head. Uh, you've seen this in some videos already, but I wanted to point it out and say thanks to my brother-in-law, Jake, for getting this custom made for me. This is my Captain Logan Batcave Batlight, and uh, it's it's great. It looks really good on camera. Uh, it's become kind of a conversation piece down here. People come down and immediately, that's the first thing they see. And uh, super cool of Jake for getting that made for me. It's awesome. It's uh, definitely one of the coolest things I got for Christmas. Um, the only thing I don't like about it is it eats batteries like crazy. Uh, it is very likely that by the end of the omnibus it will be dimmer and you will be able to tell that it is dimmer. Um, so I'm going to be trading batteries out quite a bit, but uh, that's the, the, not to criticize a, a gift I got, but if you're wondering why it's getting dimmer, uh, it's because it does not have the best battery pack, but uh, that's just how those come. So anyway, uh, but uh, that's the first thing that's super cool. And then uh, some things I got in the mail from subscribers. I have still not figured out who sent this to me. Um, or if they came out of the woodwork and mentioned it, I don't remember now. Again, I should have written these down. Um, but anyway, so uh, if you're watching this, person who sent me this, leave a comment and let me know. Another uh, piece of decoration for the Batcave, which uh, has actually been in front of the Batcave door. Here's my welcome to the Batcave doormat. Uh, so I have, what, four? You, you should be the only person that's allowed rugs. to have that. <laughs> Or I one mean, of the only people. I know the people have There are other people that have what I would refer to as bat caves. But I bet you most people buy that and put in front of their house. Probably so. And yeah. that's wrong. Yeah, no. Uh, it should go in front of your actual uh, cave or basement that you dress as a cave. Um, but that's really cool. Uh, I think it, it, it kind of helps round this room out. Um, I really like having that. And I think it's fun, Eric, that it's made like a regular... It's still funny that it's made like uh, a regular doormat where it's not a, a different... Like it's just it, it's your normal brown doormat. And that's really mm -hmm. cool. Um, but anyway, so thanks to the person who sent me that, and um, by the way, I, I want to mention, um, because people, every time I, I talk about uh, things people have sent me, they're like, well, Cap, you don't have a P.O. box anymore. How are people sending you things? Um, I am, there, there are a, a few people that um, I have uh, given a different address to so that uh, they can send me stuff, but I don't, um, you know, publicly put an address out right now. I'm finally going to have a P.O. box again here pretty soon. I announced this last week, and I just haven't gotten around to getting it, but it is about to happen, so... Um, if you if you want to send me stuff um, to uh, uh, hopefully try to get to review or uh, just to show off on uh, new acquisitions or just to see uh, my and Eric's reactions as we open them, uh, getting back eventually, finally, to um, Mailbag Day, uh, you'll be able to finally do that. And I get questions about it all the time. And also, if you have stray comics that you want a good home for, because um, I am, of course, uh, actively collecting singles, and I'm selling singles again, finally. So um, if you if you got random comics, you don't know where to, where to get them, feel free to send them to me, and I will find a good home home for them. Um, okay, so uh, speaking of stuff people sent me, I got two copies, Eric. I got two copies of what I have referred to in the past as the Holy Grail. Uh, one from Bag Studios and one from Jeffrey Patron. I want to say uh, thanks so much to both of these guys. Um, one of these I'm going to send back in the mail, uh, but I wanted to just show you that I wound up with two of them and I thought that was absolutely hilarious. I mentioned this uh, on a show. Do you remember what show it was? That I brought this up on was it an omnibus or was it even? I think, I think it was. I think it was our Christmas present video. That's what it. That is what it was. Yeah. You know what? I brought it up because you gave me a, a I superhero gave you, movie. I gave you, uh, well, and you were like, "Well, what could it be?" Uh, you, you're like, "Well, Nick Fury is the obvious one." Because that was the thing I've been wanting to get, and it's yeah. hard to get. Yeah. And and it was the Aquaman pilot, which I've now done a rewind on already. Mm -hmm. And um, this I will also try to do a rewind on Have you maybe seen this it? year when I was a kid. When it was on. Oh, okay. I actually saw it when it aired. It's fascinating. Because it starts campy and then goes off the rails. Like, I awesome. think it knows what it is in the beginning and then it devolves. Doesn't it have like a flying car or something? I well, she, well, she loves flying cars. They have it in the show TV show. No, no, I'm just saying, I think it has. I think, I think, it, it I think they do that. I think it does. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm not saying that, that makes at it. At one point watching it. What? Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Did yeah, you really? I did. Uh, anyway, so Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., the TV movie from what, 98, I think? I think uh, so. Yeah, because it's right before Blade and it's written by David S. Goyer. Yes, from one of the writers of Batman Begins. It's one of the best Why covers ever. Why does it just ever. say the, the writer of Blade? I, I, yeah, I don't know. It's That's hilarious. Anyway, the so... The Man of Steel. Thanks to both of these guys for sending this to me. Um, and uh, Back Studios, I'm going to send yours back. Uh, anyway, so uh, that's that. And then uh, Back Studios also sent me, and he is... That's Justin. He's the guy who is doing the uh, new edits for Superhero Rewind with the stills. Um, he sent me 
what I've been told is uh, one of the worst superhero B movies of all time. People keep asking me to review this. Uh, the Amazing Bulk. Have you heard I, about this? I've I have, but I don't know why. Like I, I want to say I've seen a video about it. It's just like something that like got like After Effects and like yeah. made. Like, it's, it's not like a real movie, right? No, it's like Sin City, but if like all you had was After Effects. So it's like effectively a fan film, but what it, what? It, but it's not because it's somehow got um, made up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like this, this isn't. But like, there's a point where like they're driving in cars and like they're like anything. drawn, like hand drawn cartoon cars. Okay, so I'll take. Uh, I don't think it's even rewindable. If I remember from like the video that I saw on that, at some point like a decade ago. I mean, I have definitely done reviews that of, of movies that I would call not rewindable, but I tried it anyway. I don't want to do this, but um, I have to decide if it counts. Because if it counts, I have to do it at some point. Because I've. Uh, but if it's just kind of a movie somebody made in their basement, like that, that doesn't really count. It's six minutes. Yeah. That's that's the actual line. Just barely. sure. But I don't know if this counts as even really a, an official release. But but then I don't say that it has to be a studio necessarily. Like I've done independent films, right? Mm -hmm. I did Defendor mm. and stuff. Yeah, but that's not Defendor. It's not Defendor. Yeah. I don't know. It's just, you got to figure out the, the the category classification. And then this is really cool. I've started collecting uh, superhero movies on VHS again. And he sent me the um, Captain Marvel serial, uh, the Republic serial on VHS, which I didn't even know was ever released on VHS. Cool cover. Yeah. That guy with a spider on his face. <laughs> or is it a scorpion? Uh, I'm surprised they can fit all of this onto two VHSs. 12 episodes? 12 like episodes? Five minutes of yeah. I mean, you know, you can get. Uh, I guess that's 120 on each. You can get two and a half, three hours on one, one VHS tape if you do a long play. And they, they, might, they might be long play. They games. might be long play. I don't know. But anyway, so uh, yeah, thanks for that. That is super cool. That's a neat find. I did not even know that existed. Uh, again, on VHS. And then uh, let me try to look at split and go through some other stuff. Uh, Jeffrey sent me these uh, 33 and a third uh, um, books. And I didn't know about this. This is a series that uh, is about particular albums, um, and it's it's all it's all different people. It's sort of like um, it's it's a uh, it, it, what's what's the I'm just not thinking of things what's the, like the the series of uh, lectures where they just get random people to come up TED on stage talks. it's like it's like a TED it's like TED talks in, in book form but you know longer and, and on an album and on an album uh, but they're really thorough and they go through uh, like the history of the band and a lot of other things so it's not just the album but then but then it's also uh, like a real uh, complex intricate um, a discussion and analysis of the album. So I got one from for uh, Flood by the Miami Giants, and I got one for Murmur uh, by REM, which is an album I'm not super familiar with, so I'm going to have to go back and re-listen to that a little bit. But of course, Flood I'm very familiar with. And uh, I started reading this one, and uh, all the chapter titles are, a lot of them, real deep pulls for lyrics of TMUG songs, going all the way up. Like, there's a couple of references to the albums from the last, like, three or four years. Um, actually, I don't know when this came out, but uh, so maybe not three or four years, but recently. Uh, anyway, so these are really cool, and um, I've already started in on this one, and uh, I'm excited about these. Um, this feels like a thing I could really deep dive into and get other get I know books about for. those because John Darnelli, Darnell, who who is the like the main guy for the Mountain Goats, wrote one of those for oh, Metallica cool. album. Really, it's a prose story. Oh. About someone affected by it, and people are like, look, I'm not saying this is bad. It's not what the rest of these books are, and like, like, why would you release? This? No, that shouldn't count. It's almost like nobody told him what he was supposed to do. No, and they're like, you write a book about the album. And he's like, okay, I'll write a book about and the album. When I said TED talks, only in that it's it's a lot of different people that they go yeah, yeah, get to yeah. make yeah. these. Um, but there's kind of a uniform. I don't know if there's a straight up uniform format for them, but they're they're essays. I mean, they're lengthy essays. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, but uh, yeah, that's weird that they allowed that. Yeah, and then. Um, I got. I didn't bring all of it well, out your here. Your two are similar, and they're more diverse than that. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe so. I don't know. But given the reactions I saw when I was two, does not a pattern design. make. I'm yeah. making an assumption yeah. there, I guess. But 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 given the reactions I saw years ago when I when I first was looking at that, that I, I'd imagine that is the case. So I didn't bring all of it down to the cave here because there's a lot of it. But I did recently buy all of Injustice in uh, singles, and um, we got this also at Eric's store. Um, Eric sent me a message. It was like, uh, hey, we got all of Injustice, and. Uh, I think you were kind of surprised that I came in and got them. Uh, I was. Not just Injustice. Like, like uh, also, uh, most of Injustice 2? 
it, it's all I think actually all of Injustice too. There's one issue missing from something. Yeah. But it's uh it, it's Injustice uh, years one through five. Uh, it's the the prequel thing is in Ground there. Ground Zero. Ground Zero is in there. I guess that's the prequel thing. And then I uh, the the crossover with Masters of the Universe is yeah. in there. Yeah. Like it's it's not it's not just. All of like injustice. It's all it's everything of they've injustice. printed so far. Yeah, and I expect we'll get more stuff down the road. But uh, especially with her whenever it comes out. So I'm caught up now, and uh, but that's why I went ahead and uh, dropped a couple hundred bucks to get all of this. And um, you guys had it for a decent price. It was like yeah. half cover. Yeah. Um, but I had wanted to. Get, I started collecting this in trade. I bought one trade. I've reviewed that, and I was like, uh, but I really would, would have rather just gotten it in singles as it came out, and I just missed the boat on it. It was already out for a while before I started getting it. It was it started as one of those digital first things. Oh yeah. And sometimes when, when those would get collected, they wouldn't read great because they were meant to be read like a few pages at a time in the first place. And it would be kind of weird that like a scene would interrupt another scene kind of and um, it has that problem a little bit. It's not terrible. Yeah because um, uh, I know some of them I don't know if it was with the injustice, but some of them because digital pages are half a were no, or half a normal page, so when yeah. you were looking at a physical page of comic, you were looking at two digital pages. So like on the same page, you get a scene interrupting a scene. Yeah, and I didn't like that. Uh, but anyway, so I have reviewed the first year before, um, so I started in, in on this again just to refresh myself, and that's why you're looking at issue seven here because that's where I am here. So um, I'm not going to review any oh, of so that you're tonight. Six issues in. But yeah, so I'm, I'm going back and rereading the first year. Oh, nice. And then I'm going to start it on on uh, year two, and um, I don't know how exactly I'm going to review them, if I'm going to, uh, you know, do, do it year by year, or just check in wherever I am on, you know, on the omnibus, but uh, I'll be going through all of this, and, um, you know, I, I like the first year quite a bit. Uh, I'm having I'm issues with this, with, with, with uh, this viewing, or a reading that I have not had in the past. Uh, well, which, you only read it once before, right? I read it, this is, the, this is my third time through it now, oh, okay. actually, believe it or not. Um, I read it online uh, before I ever got the, uh, the trade. Oh, okay, okay. Um, and then read it again to review, and now I'm reading a third time just to have it in my head. Uh, so you can go into I, the, the following years. When I go into the following years. And then the quality yeah. drops off immediately. <laughs> yeah, maybe so. A um, couple other things real briefly. Uh, we're out of time. Here is what I'm referring to as the definitive Power Rangers textbook. Uh, maybe not so definitive. Uh, there, it's it's missing some things I, I wish were in here. Uh, Eric ran a chat there and was not super impressed with it. Uh, the layout is gorgeous, though. Um, I don't know it's how the looking stuff it's is. It's a good looking book. But that's not a warts and all history, which is what I want. Well, to be fair, the Turtles one wasn't exactly worth it all. Okay, because like they talk about stuff like the 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 Milo the the, the Vias de Milo thing and stuff like that. Oh, well, you know what? That's true. That's true. Um, but it's the nice thing with these as visual histories is that it's not just pictures. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, there is a fair bit of text, and you do learn some things you didn't know before. Um, the The movie chapter is decent. I definitely learned some stuff mm -hmm. I didn't know before. So it's more you know you know behind the scenes stuff. But you're right; it's not it's not super warts at all. It's not. Um, there's not a lot of behind the scenes drama and stuff. Well, like I don't that. even need that. So I read the Lost Galaxy chapter, yeah. and it doesn't talk about any of the production turmoil. Like no one knows what the Lost Galaxy is. And there's a lot of different. Just doesn't even bring that up. No, and like that, there were different ideas, and what they eventually settled on was like a pocket dimension, is what the lost got. Like the reason for the title of the show, because they just came up with a title. Like, yeah. They didn't know what it meant. And it feels like a mystery. That's not in there at all. Okay. No, that is a problem. I would say, and I've not read a ton of this, as you can tell. I would say it's still probably worth picking up just for, especially if you can get it, um, not you know, for less than cover. I bought. I imagine the money orphan stuff is pretty extensive. Like twenty eight on, yeah, and, and like the like uh, thumbing through the the first couple of seasons, it's a lot of pages. Mm. But anyway, um, especially if you can get this cheaper, because I got it for like twenty eight bucks on Amazon, which um, is not bad. Which, which is not bad. But there's a lot of like concept art and things like that that's worth looking at. Like I say, it's nice that it's not just pictures. It's also worth it for the pictures. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, and then the other thing I want to make sure and mention today is. I've got my Gold Ranger staff. So excited about this. Uh, thanks to my father-in-law for buying me this. Uh, such a weird thing to get for, 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 for uh, your father-in-law. But he sent me a message. He's like, what do you want for Christmas? And I sent him a couple things uh, that I needed just for practical stuff, like bags and boards for comics mm -hmm. and things. And then I was like, and then I sent him a link to the uh, Amazon page for this. And I was like, if you want to get me something super frivolous, uh, here, here's, here's what I'm looking for. And I'm sure he had no idea what this was, but uh, he would, it was really cool of him to get me this. Um, and he was like, uh, when we were there for Christmas, he was like, don't look at the shape of the box. And I was like, well, I know what I'm getting. Uh, but anyway, so this is the Legacy uh, Adult Gold Ranger staff. Um, 
of the things I would really like about it is so this is uh, like to scale of what it what it uh, was the show. Yeah, because it makes the toy one look like a baby one. Yeah, it, it really does, and that's true of all of these, but especially this one because it's so big. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the things I really appreciate about this is at first I thought that this didn't slide up like it's supposed to, and I was like, really, it, it, it doesn't slide. Um, this is a button, and it's a really inconspicuous button. I almost can't tell, and so that's kind of nice. And then pops open. Where is the? I honestly haven't looked at this in a couple of weeks, and I forget momentarily. I'm forgetting where it turns on. I think it's here. It's back here. But yeah, so Legacy Gold Ranger staff. Um, it is. Last I checked on sale on Amazon for half of what it came out as. So it was 150 bucks. Uh, last I looked, it was 75. Oh, that's not Which bad. is a uh, real nice price for this, I think. So, yeah. So anyway, uh, that is uh, everything right now for new acquisitions. I had a couple of other little things that I'll mention next time. But uh, anyway, so thanks a lot for watching, everybody. And uh, stay tuned. Stick around with us for more Geek Geekvolution Omnibus. Uh, next up on the Omnibus, we're going to go into Geeks Not Nerds. And we're going to talk about a topic that Eric doesn't even know what we're discussing. Uh, but it is uh, very unlike us, Eric. We're, we're going to talk about superhero movies again. Oh, no. Yeah, that's what we're doing. I know I know that's not your forte. I know you haven't spent any time thinking about that. No, no. But uh, that's what we're, that, that is the general broader topic. Anyway, uh, thanks a lot for watching, folks, and stay tuned with us. I am Captain Logan. And I'm Eric. We'll see you here in a minute.